Okay, so uh, welcome to this next video in which we're talking about slow channel myasthenic syndrome. Right, okay, so we were discussing the electrical potential difference across a skeletal muscle cell membrane. So the resting electrical potential difference across the membrane of a skeletal muscle cell is generally around negative 95 millivolts. Now that's high. Uh, what this means is that if a man moves from the extracellular to the intracellular compartment, the number on his screen, the electrical potential, will go down by 95 millivolts, okay? Right, so it means the intracellular electrical potential is lower than the extracellular electrical potential by a whole 95 millivolts. Now, sodium ions uh, and potassium ions both have a positive charge, okay? So they want to be in um, the place where the electrical potential is lower and the electrical potential is lower in the intracellular compartment. So, basically, the electrical potential gradient across this membrane is going to favour the movement of sodium in. So it's going to help the concentration gradient, and it's going to increase the movement of sodium in hugely. So this arrow should really be getting absolutely massive. It should be hugely uh, potentiated by the electrical gradient across the membrane, whereas this one is completely obliterated by it. This goes almost completely. In fact, it might even be reversed slightly, because this is actually strong enough to completely oppose this uh, movement of potassium out, and it will actually maybe even start bringing some potassium in, because it is actually slightly beyond the Nernst potential for potassium, which is usually uh, considered to be around negative 85 millivolts, uh, i.e. At negative 85 millivolts across this membrane, you'd get no movement of potassium, i.e. the um, driving force out by the concentration gradient will be equal to the driving force in by the electrical gradient, but this is beyond that, so you may even get a tiny movement of potassium inwards. Okay, so when you open this nicotinic acetylcholine receptor in the membrane of uh, the skeletal muscle cell, what's going to happen is you're going to bring sodium in, maybe a little bit of potassium in as well, and that means you're going to get positive charge coming into the cell. And when you bring positive charge into the cell, what that's going to do is it's going to raise the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment. In addition, this positive charge hasn't just appeared out of nowhere, it's come from somewhere. It came from the extracellular compartment. So you're moving positive charge out of the extracellular compartment, and this means you're going to lower the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment. So this goes down, this goes up. So, remember initially, this one was lower than this one by 95 millivolts. If this one's going up and this one's going down, then the amount by which this one is lower than this one is also going to go down, so this number is going to become less negative, okay? And that's known as a depolarization. So you will depolarize the membrane when you open these uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors in it. Okay, so now on to slow-channel myasthenic uh, syndrome then. So, firstly, let me explain to you what uh, myasthenic means. Myasthenic is something people have generally heard of because of myasthenia gravis. Um, now, myasthenic, however, just means uh, any condition, okay? You could use myasthenic to describe any condition uh, which leads to muscle weakness, okay? So that means that you have real trouble getting your muscles to actually contract. You have to put a huge amount of effort to actually get your muscles to contract, basically. That's what muscle weakness is. So any syndrome that is described with this word myasthenic means that uh, it results in this muscle weakness, this inability to actually contract uh, your muscles. Okay, now, in slow-channel myasthenic syndromes, what happens is you get mutations in the subunits of um, the uh, neuromuscular junction nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So remember, we discussed that the neuromuscular junction nicotinic acetylcholine receptor had the subunit composition alpha-1,2, beta-1, delta, epsilon. So it was made up of these four separate types of uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor subunit. Now, 
basically in uh, slow channel myasthenic syndromes, you can get mutations in any of these four subunits, whichever one you like. There are people with slow channel myasthenic syndromes who have mutations in all of them. Well, not in all of them, sorry. Let me explain this more clearly. Basically, slow channel myasthenic syndrome is a problem with the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. And the way this problem can occur is you can get a mutation in the subunits that make up the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. However, I want to stress that you don't need a mutation in absolutely every single one. You just need a mutation in one of them. So, if you get a mutation in one of the subunits which makes up is needed for the adult form of the neuromuscular junction nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, this can lead to slow channel syndrome. Okay, you don't need to have mutations in all four of them. However, basically, which one you actually get a mutation in, it can be whichever one you like, basically. So you get a mutation in one of these subunits which makes up the neuromuscular junction nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. And what this leads to is it leads to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor opening upon stimulation by acetylcholine and then remaining open for far too long. So basically, it has a prolonged mean open time. So prolonged mean open time. So you get a mutation in one of the subunits uh, that makes up the neuromuscular junction uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor and this results in the channel having a prolonged mean open time. So basically, when the acetylcholine binds, what usually happens at the neuromuscular junction is that the acetylcholine receptor will then open for a while, and then what will happen is it will desensitize, it will close. So let me just review this. So, basically, you start off with your nicotinic acetylcholine receptor in the closed but resting state here. So I'll show it like this. So the pore is closed. So this is the closed. But then you put forward slash resting, OK? So this has no ligand bound to it yet. Now, when the ligand binds, so when acetylcholine comes and binds, what will happen is the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor will go into the open state. So here's the open state. And that needs to have the ligand bound, so I'll draw two acetylcholine molecules, which are just going to be denoted as these little squares, bound to the extracellular domains of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So in turquoise here, I'll denote the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, right. So, that bit we know, that this is just a revision. But then what happens is it goes from being in the open state to then being in a closed desensitized state. So even though it's still got the ligand bound, it's going to close again. Okay? And this is not the same state as over here. This is a separate state, and it's known as the closed, and then you put forward slash desensitized state. Okay? And in this state, uh, the ligand is still bound, but the receptor has closed. Okay? Now, it, it will remain open before it goes to the desensitized state for a certain amount of time, basically. So, you start off with the channel in the closed resting state. The acetylcholine comes, binds to the extracellular domain of uh, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, and then causes it to go into the open state. But it only remains there for a certain amount of time. Then it goes into the closed slash desensitized state for it. So it has a certain amount of open time. So this is the, after a certain amount of time, which we'll call the mean open time, it will then go into the desensitized state. And I want to stress that the amount of time it takes to go from here to here is not a set number. It will vary between uh, different channels at different times. But there will be some certain average amount of time that it takes to go from the open to the closed desensitized state. And that's the mean open time. Okay, so basically in these slow channel syndrome mutants, what's happened is... Uh, the mutation that you have in one of these four subunits that make up the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor results in this mean open time being 
hugely uh, increased. So it will take a lot longer to go from the open to the closed desensitized state. So it will remain open for much longer. Now, what that means is it's going to allow much more current to move into uh, the uh, skeletal muscle cell. Now, this has two effects. Firstly, what it actually results in is multiple action potentials firing because when you initially bring in uh, the um, depolarizing current, what that will cause is an action potential. But then what will happen is all the machinery at the sarcolemma will recover and then it will be able to fire another action potential. So, let me discuss this with you down here. Okay, so, let's show the machinery that's involved in the action potential. So you have voltage-gated sodium channels, which are very important. So we'll show these here. So this is a voltage-gated sodium channel. Voltage-gated sodium channel, NC. And for short, we'll denote this VGNC for voltage-gated. And then we're using the periodic table name for sodium, natremium, and then channel. Okay, so let's color this in pink. So basically, when uh, the electrical potential difference across the membrane is depolarized up to a certain threshold potential, these voltage-gated sodium channels will be activated to open. Okay, and I believe it's the NAV 1.4 voltage-gated sodium channel that you find in skeletal muscle cells. Okay, now, uh, if we draw a graph of the electrical potential difference against time, so this is the electrical potential difference across the cell membrane against time, then it will start off at something like negative 95 millivolts. So that's the resting membrane potential across the skeletal muscle cell membrane. And then what will happen is, as the acetylcholine opens the uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, this will lead to a depolarizing current, which will take us up to some threshold potential here. So this is the threshold potential. And when you reach the threshold potential, what will happen is the voltage-gated sodium channels will open. Okay, And these will now allow sodium to move into the cell. So more sodium will come into the cell. And this will lead to the rapid upstroke of the action potential. Okay, These voltage-gated sodium channels will be open for a certain amount of time, and then they too will go into a closed desensitized state. So even though you are beyond the threshold potential for the activation of these voltage-gated sodium channels, they also uh, go into a closed desensitized state. So they start in a closed resting state down here. Then when you reach the threshold potential, that activates them to open. So forget the ligand. But apart from the ligand, it's exactly the same principle. And then uh, they remain open for a certain amount of time. And then after that time, they're going to start closing. And they'll go into a closed desensitized state, where even though you're above threshold potential, they are in a closed state. Then what will happen, and by the way, once you get to this, you're at around negative, sorry, plus, 40 millivolts, which means that you've actually completely reversed the electrical potential difference. The intracellular electrical potential is now greater than the extracellular electrical potential by a whole 40 millivolts. Okay, then what will happen is voltage-gated potassium channels here, so I'll draw this cell, well, I'll draw this channel here, so this is a voltage-gated potassium van channel, VGKC, voltage-gated kalemium, uh, the periodic table name for potassium, and then channel. Okay, and we'll denote this in green. These will then open, okay? And they were activated to open actually long ago as well. They were activated to open down here. So they were activated by the depolarization as well, not by this... Um, they were, it, most people are under the illusion that they're, op they're activated to open at plus 40 millivolts. That's not correct. They were activated to open somewhere right down here. It's just they're really slow about going from the closed resting state to the open state. So they're only just starting to open when the voltage-gated sodium channels are starting to close. Now when these open, you get a movement of potassium out of the cell, and this repolarizes the electrical potential across the membrane. Uh, what, sorry, the electrical potential difference across the membrane. 
because you're going to move potassium ions out of the cell. And when you move positive charge out of the cell, that will raise the electrical potential of the extracellular compartment and lower the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment. So that will have the effect of making the difference between these two more negative again. Okay, so what you do is you get the downstroke of the action potential. This takes you down, 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 back down, even slightly lower than negative 95 millivolts. You get a transient depolarization. Then these channels too will inactivate, and then what will happen is that you'll gradually return to the resting potential as the usual apparatus of the cell membrane return you back to the equilibrium potential. Okay. And then what will happen is both of these channels will go back into the closed resting state. Now, the important thing to understand is that, um, well, firstly, let me just discuss how then the action potential propagates along the cell membrane. So, this is all happening as a tiny little bit of the sarcolemma. How it propagates to the neighboring portion of sarcolemma is that in the upstroke of the action potential, you're allowing a lot of sodium ions into the cell. Okay, and these will diffuse over to the neighboring portion of membrane and they'll cause depolarization of the electrical potential difference in that neighboring portion of the membrane because they will raise the electrical potential of the intracellular compartment since sodium has a positive charge and that will mean uh, that the electrical potential difference across the membrane becomes less negative so you'll be on this phase of the action potential here and that's how it propagates along the sarcolemma and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.